I'm Nahal Iravani Sani. Place of birth is Tehran, Iran, and I currently live in San Jose, California. The first time I came here, I was just five years old, didn't know a word of English, and uh, went to kindergarten in Palo Alto, severely missed my grandparents. My father had received a fellowship from the World Health Organization to pursue his graduate studies in environmental uh, engineering at Stanford University. And then we went back to Iran, then the revolution happened in 1979, and then we moved back over here basically to pursue higher education. We always thought we would go back. And I think my canned answer to everybody back then was that we're here for a year or two. And then that turned to five years. And I think after the probably the sixth or seventh year, we realized, no, we're here to stay. I definitely remember feeling like the outsider. I was the kid with the funky accent. And even though I knew the language and I could speak it fluently, I think having the bit of the accent was a bit of a hurdle. I felt displaced, even as a young child. I was recently looking back, sharing with my sons some of my diary entries from way back then. There's a picture, it's a picture of me sitting on my bed with tears saying, I miss Kiyosat friends, which is my elementary school in Iran. Here in Iran, at the beginning of another week, students holding 50 hostages at the American embassy still give no sign of allowing an independent appraisal of One of my earlier of memories from moving over here was just the nightly news with Peter Jennings doing the countdown of the hostage crisis going on. I personally wasn't that affected, but I would hear stories from my sister who was 15, and she would come home with um, a lot of sadness because people would be telling her, go back to Iran, go back to your country, or there'd be people actually wearing t-shirts uh, flipping off the Ayatollah. But I think witnessing my parents' struggle was the biggest challenge because they definitely gave up on their life and their status back in Iran. My father, as I said, was uh, U.S. educated with a graduate degree from one of the most respected universities worldwide. I remember every job that he applied for, they would say he's overqualified. He finally found employment again, but I remember those early years was difficult. So my mother is the one that ended up having to then start working. Her passion had always been good skincare, and then ultimately she opened a skincare salon. I never thought growing up that I would be a lawyer. There were no lawyers in our family, so it was definitely new territory that I was getting into. It wasn't anything that I thought I was interested in. And when I think back to what, how I ended up here, I think it goes back to my mother encouraging me to take a speech class. I ended up competing in local and then state and then national championships as part of our speech and debate team. Uh, did very well. Our entire team and me personally won awards nationally. I was showing some aptitude in law and I decided to apply to law school, went to Santa Clara University. I'm the first um, Iranian-American deputy DA in the history of Santa Clara County. I remember those early days where I'd be waiting in court for my case to be called and a defense attorney approached me and uh, said, are you the Spanish-speaking interpreter and do you know when the DA will get here? <laughs> And I just had to laugh and say, no, I don't speak a word of Spanish, and I am the DA on the case. That's part of what makes it, I think, fun to change these stereotypes and be the face of the next generation of DAs in Santa Clara County. Now I always identify as Iranian-American. I think there was a time when I was in high school, perhaps, or even college, where I would always say, I'm Persian from Iran. Because I thought the proper way of identifying your nationality was to say Persian, but I wanted to make sure, even at a young age, that nobody's thinking I'm saying Persian to disguise where I'm really from. I think sometime around maybe early 2000s or mid 2000s, it was around the same time that a lot of Iranian American organizations were sprouting. The community started slowly using the word Iranian American. Around 30 years after the history of our immigration, it was a good time for people to want to come together and start giving our community a voice. Everybody all over. America has welcomed us here, and through our hard work and determination, 
we have shown and continue to demonstrate that we are giving back to the United States. Some of us were born here, some of us immigrated here, but with whether we were born here or immigrated here, each one of us is an ambassador to our heritage. Each one of us is a face of our community. This truly is a land of opportunity. If there is a committee which isn't properly represented by having an Iranian American there, step up, volunteer to serve on that committee. If you see a library display of the Chinese New Year, but then a few weeks later you see that it's missing a, Nowruz on dis a display on Nowruz, talk to the head librarian. I mention these examples because through me doing the same thing, I've seen that people are actually receptive to it and you have the opportunity to have a voice and have a presence as long as you step up to it.